Okay, if you're um, watching this video, you obviously found it on uh, YouTube channel. This is a design for my uh, managerial accounting class, uh, managerial accounting at Providence College. This is ACC 204. And the topic of uh, today's um, discussion is going to be statement of cash flows, specifically from our textbook. This is the Kimmel textbook, seventh edition, uh, chapter 12. And essentially this is going to be a voiceover PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I have taken the publisher's PowerPoint presentation and modified it, added, added some material that uh, I would ordinarily use in the classroom. But since we are working on a um, remote learning basis, uh, this, is, this is the PowerPoint presentation that we, that we have. So let me uh, take a moment here and share my screen so that I can pull up uh, this uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, bring it right here. Uh, I certainly hope that uh, this, is, <laughs> this is working. So we're going to go from the beginning. And um, this is, uh, again, from the publisher's uh, PowerPoint deck, uh, Accounting Tools for Business Decision Making. That's the name of the textbook. This is seventh edition of the textbook and the, the author is uh, Kimmel, Weigand, and Kaiso. This is uh, chapter 12, Statement of Cash Flows. And as we discussed previously, the um, um, although this is managerial accounting at Providence College, what we do is uh, uh, the financial accounting class, ACC 203, doesn't have the time to uh, cover statement of cash flows. Statement of cash flows is technically financial accounting. Uh, it is one of the four major financial statements. So as you recall, the financial statements are uh, income statement, a statement of retained earnings, balance sheet, and now the statement of cash flows. So we're going to spend a um, some time here going over chapter 12 and uh, here's, here's our PowerPoint presentation. Uh, essentially, these are the learning objectives for uh, chapter 12. Uh, the first one is discuss the usefulness and format of the statement of cash flows. Uh, secondly, we're going to be preparing the statement of cash flows using the indirect method. We're not using the direct method. We're using the indirect method. And the final uh, learning objective is using the statement of cash flows to evaluate a company, talking about free cash flow assessment, essentially. Uh, first learning objective, discuss the usefulness in the format of the statement of cash flows. The usefulness, it provides information to help assess the entity's ability to generate cash flows. So let's back up a little bit. Uh, you spent a lot of time in financial accounting talking about the accrual basis method of accounting. And as you recall, the accrual basis method of accounting recognized revenue when it was earned not cash received, recognize revenue when it was earned, and recognize expenses when they were incurred. Nothing to deal with cash. You did not record revenue when the cash was received, and you did not record expenses when the cash was paid. So it was the accrual basis method of accounting. So those financial statements are not cash basis financial statements. It doesn't speak a lot about the company's ability to generate cash. The statement of cash flows does. The statement of cash flows shows inflows of cash and outflows of cash. Why is cash important? Cash is important because it's the ability to pay your bills, okay? So it provides information to help assess the entity's ability to generate cash flows, entity's ability to pay dividends and meet its obligations, that is to pay its liabilities. Reasons for differences between net income and net cash provided or used by operating activities is essentially the difference between the accrual basis method of accounting and the cash basis method of accounting. And then 
the cash investing in financing transactions during the period of time. So we have three major categories on the statement of cash flows. We're gonna see the statement in a few minutes, but the, the, the three major components is cash flows. When we say cash flows, we mean inflows, cash coming into the company, and outflows, cash going out of the company. First one is operating activities. And there's a lot of things there from the income statement. Investing activities, the second major uh, section of the statement of cash flows, changes in investments in long-term asset items. And then the third major section is financing activities, changes in long-term liabilities in stockholders' equity. Classification of cash flows, operating activities, primarily come from the income statement. Cash inflows are coming from things, from sale of goods or services, from interest received and dividends received. Cash outflows to suppliers, to employees, to government for taxes, interest, and other expenses. The operations of the business. Investing activities, changes in investments in long-term assets. Cash inflows from the sale of property, plant, and equipment. Another example of an inflow is from the sale of investments in debt and equity securities from the collection of principal on loans to other entities. The outflows of cash would be things like the purchase of property, plant, and equipment, a new building, a new manufacturing facility, equipment that could be something like a computer, a truck, vehicle, furniture. Another outflow is the purchase of investments. You might buy some Apple stock or Amazon stock or invest in other companies to make loans to other entities as well. Financing activities, changes in long-term liabilities and stockholders equity, cash inflows from the sale or the issuance of common stock. You remember that transaction? from financial accounting, issuance of common stock in exchange for cash, the company received cash. From the issuance of bonds, you remember bonds, cash outflows, dividends paid to stockholders, or to return or to redeem long-term debt, or to reacquire common, common stock, capital stock, it's called treasury stock. Significant non-cash activities, things that don't affect statement of cash flows. Direct issuance of common stock to purchase assets. There's no cash transaction there. They give common stock and they receive an asset. There's no effect on cash. Conversions of bonds into common stock. Again, they're giving common stock and receiving bonds. There's no impact on cash. Issuance of debt to purchase assets. Think about it. We get a new piece of equipment and sign a note. Cash has not been exchanged. That's a non-cash activity. Exchanges of plant assets. You give a vehicle and receive another vehicle in exchange. No impact on cash. Companies report non-cash activities in either a separate schedule or a note to the financial statement. So you do need to report the transaction, but it's not in the statement of cash flows. Here's your basic format for the statement of cash flows. Obviously the name of the company, the title of the name of the company, which financial statement you're looking at, and what's the time period. Title is very important to the reader of the financial statement. So you see your big categories here, cash flows from operating activities. And we're gonna put a lot of stuff in there. Cash flows, both inflow and outflow. Cash flow from investing activities. And each one of these categories have a net cash provided, which is a positive number, or net cash used, which is a negative number. 
So you've got operating activities, investing activities, financing activities. Then you have a net increase or decrease, the summation of those three categories. You have cash at the beginning of the period, cash at the end of the period, and then those numbers, cash at the end of the period should agree with the ending balance in cash on the balance sheet. And here's a separate section listed below or in a footnote to the financial statements, non-cash investing and financing activities. Here's a question for you. Classify each of these transactions by type of cash flow activity. Issued 100,000 shares of $5 par value common stock for $800,000 cash. Okay, remember the difference between par value and issuance value. Additional paid in capital. Financing activity. Borrowed, uh, borrowed $200,000 from Castle Bank, signing a five-year note bearing 8% interest. So they received some cash. Again, a financing activity. Number three, purchased two semi-trailer trucks for $170,000 cash. So cash was an outflow here. They had an investing activity here, purchase a new trailer. Paid employees, right? Paid means cash. Employees, $12,000 for salaries and wages. It's gonna be an operating activity. And then lastly, collected $20,000 cash for services performed. That's revenue. It's gonna be an operating activity. Learning objective two. This is the meat of this chapter. Prepare a statement of cash flows using the indirect method, okay? In order to prepare the statement of cash flows, we need three big sources of information. We need a comparative balance sheet. That's a comparative balance sheet. Comparative balance sheet is a balance sheet as of say 12, 31, 19 and a balance sheet as of 12, 31, 20. Comparative, one year versus the next year, that's a comparative balance sheet. You need the current income statement for the year ended 12, 31, 20. And then you need some additional information that primarily speaks to things like whether there was a sale or purchase of new assets, whether it was a payment of dividends, whether the company issued additional stocks so or additional information is going to be helpful in preparing. Steps, there's a couple of different sources here. The steps in order to prepare the statement of cash flows, they're not going to be tested. You're not going to be tested on the steps. The steps are merely a tool that help you understand how to prepare the statement of cash flows. You are responsible for preparing the statement of cash flow. So step number one, determine net cash provided to use by operating activities by converting net income from an accrual basis to the cash basis. Involves analyzing current year's income statement, comparative balance sheets, and sele selected additional data. So we'll see that in a few minutes. Step number two, analyze changes in non-current asset. This is the long-term stuff. Non-current asset in liability accounts and stockholders equity and record these in the investing and financing activities or you made to disclose non-cash transactions. Involves analyzing comparative balance sheet data and selected additional information for their effects on cash. Again, we'll see that in practice. Step number three, compare the net change in cash on the statement of cash flows with the change in cash account reported on the balance sheet to make sure the amounts agree. It ties in. The difference between the beginning and ending cash balances can be easily computed from the comparative balance sheet. So we told you that we're going to be using the indirect method, but let's talk a little bit about the differences between the two methods. Companies favor the indirect method for two reasons. Number one, it's easier and less costly to prepare. And number two, it focuses on differences between net income 
in net cash flow from operating activities. So here are the sources that we're going to use to prepare a statement of cash flows for this company, Computer Services. This is the current income statement. This is the multi-step income statement that you are more than familiar with. Sales revenue, you have cost of goods sold, operating expenses, excluding depreciation. There's depreciation expense, loss on the disposal of plant assets, interest expense, income tax expense, and net income. Here is the comparative balance sheet, and you can see you've got the year ended December 31st, 2022 and 2021. This is the asset section. And you can see they've calculated the change for you. And that's very important because one of our steps is to calculate the changes in all balance sheet accounts. Now, in this situation here, we have cash as of 12 31 2021 at 33,000. As of December 31st, 2022, is 55,000. So cash increased by $22,000. Now, on the statement of cash flows, we are ultimately going to prove that increase in cash of $22,000. And they did this with all the other asset accounts. Accounts receivable went from 30,000 to 20,000, a decrease of 10,000. Inventory went from 10,000 to 15,000, an increase of 5,000, et cetera, et cetera. Here is the liability in stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet. Again, 12,31,21 versus 12,31,22. For example, you can see that accounts payable went from 12,000 to 28,000 a $16,000 increase. Here's the third source of information. Remember, current income statement, comparative balance sheet, and some additional information, which is crucial in preparing statement of cash flows. Depreciation was comprised of $6,000 for building and $3,000 for equipment for a total of $9,000 in depreciation. The company sold equipment with a book value of $7,000. Remember what book value is, original cost, less accumulated depreciation. You can see original cost was eight, less 1,000 in accumulated depreciation. The book value is 7,000. They sold it for $4,000. Think about it. They received $4,000 cash, for which they had a book value of seven. They had a loss of $3,000 on the disposal of that piece of equipment. They received four, they gave up seven, they have a loss. Item three, they issued $110,000 of long-term bonds in direct exchange for land. There was no cash there. They issued $110,000 of bonds in direct exchange for the land. So there's no cash there. That's not some, that's a non-cash transaction. It's a non-cash investing and financing activity, which does not get reported in the statement of cash flows, but in a separate schedule of footnote. Item four, building cost on $120,000 was purchased for cash. It's an investment in building outflow of cash, $120,000. Equipment costing $25,000 also purchased for cash. Again, that's another outflow of cash, which we're going to show in the investing activity section. Number five, they issued common stock for $20,000 cash. Company received $20,000. That's an inflow. And they issued common stock. And lastly, the company declared and paid a $29,000 cash dividend paid. That's an outflow of cash. So that's the additional information that you're going to use in preparing the statement of cash flows. I have a couple of questions for you. Which is an example of a cash flow from an operating activity? Payment of cash to lenders for interest, 
Receipt of cash from the sale of capital stock, no. Payment of cash dividends to the company's stockholders, no. Interest expense. Okay, determine net cash provided or used by operating activities by converting net income from the accrual basis to the cash basis. How do we do this? Common adjustments to net income. Add back non cash expenses, depreciation, amortization, and depletion. Let's talk about depreciation expense for a minute. Let's remember from financial accounting what depreciation expense is. Depreciation expense is the allocation of the cost of an asset over its useful life. And you also remember what the journal entry was. It was a debit to depreciation expense, credit to accumulated depreciation. Was cash affected at all? Absolutely not. It's a non-cash transaction. Depreciation expense decreases net income but has no impact on cash. Therefore, you're gonna add it back. We are going to subtract gains and add back losses. Why? What is a gain and what is a loss on the sale of an asset. It is merely the difference between the cash received and the book value given up. It has nothing to do with cash. So what we're going to do is always add back the losses, always subtract the gains. We will pick up the cash that was received in the investing activity section. And then lastly, we're going to analyze changes in non-cash current asset and current liability accounts. Now, this is an additional slide that I put in uh, in terms of steps to prepare the statement of cash flows. I think it's slightly more helpful. Step number one from the income statement, start with net income. Always add back depreciation expense. Always add back losses on the sale of assets. Always subtract the gain on the sale of assets. Step number one, depreciation expense. Although the depreciation expense reduces net income, it does not reduce cash, said that before. The company must add it back to net income. So here is the very first section of our statement of cash flows. Cash flows from operating activities. And we do what? We start with net income. Where does that come from? It comes from the income statement, $145,000. And then another line here says, adjustments to reconcile net income to net cash provided by operating activities. And you can see what they did. They added back the depreciation, the six plus the three, right? 6,000 on building, three on equipment. Add back depreciation expense, non-cash item. Loss on the sale or loss on disposal of planned assets. Company re report as a source of cash in the investing activity section, the actual amount of cash received from the sale. So the cash received always goes in the investing activity section. But what do we do for the difference between what was received and what was given up? In other words, the loss or the gain. Any loss on disposal is added back to net income. Any gain on disposal is deducted. We talked about that before. And here's our example, right? The next line, okay, this is our cash flows from operating activities, which we've been working with. And they had the loss on the disposal of plant assets. Remember, they received $4,000 in cash. They gave up a book value of seven. They had a loss. And what did they do? They added it back. Again, this is one of the slides that I um, added to this, talking about the steps in the preparation of the statement of cash flows. I have four steps that I use. You already saw the first one. Start with net, step number one, start with net income, add back depreciation, add back losses, subtract gains. Step number two, calculate the changes in all balance sheet accounts. 
using the comparative balance sheets, calculate the dollar amount of the change from one year end to the next year, and, and indicate it if the balance goes up or down. And the example that's in this slide deck shows the comparative balance sheet with the increase or the decrease. Step number three, changes in all current assets and current liabilities. Go in the operating activity section as adjustments to net income. And this is a nice little chart to memorize. So what is it saying here? Again, this is from the changes in current assets and current liabilities. If you have a current asset, such as accounts receivable, that increases from last year to this year, you're gonna subtract the difference from net income. Now, if you have a current asset such as inventory that goes down from one year to the next, the change, you're gonna add that back to net income. Current liabilities such as accounts payable. If your accounts payable goes up, accounts payable, current liability increases, you're going to add the difference back to net income. And lastly, you may have a current liability, such as income tax payable, that goes down, that decrease. You're going to subtract the difference from net income. And then step number four, changes in long-term assets, long-term liabilities, and all equity accounts go in either the investing activity section or the financing activity section. So here, here we have an example. Again, if you go back to the balance sheet in this example, you will see that there was a decrease in accounts receivable. Accounts receivable went down by $10,000. Let's look at this slide here, right? Current asset that decreases, you're going to add the difference back to net income, and that's exactly what they did here. Their inventory account on their compar comparative balance sheet increased, increase in inventory. So let's look back here, a current asset that increases, you're gonna subtract it from net income. And that's exactly what they did. Same thing with an increase in prepaid expenses. So what you may wanna do is, is go back to that comparative balance sheet look at the changes in current assets and current liabilities and using the chart that i gave you follow how this was done here are the changes in accounts payable and income tax payable this is the publisher's slide here that also helps you understand first section here again it's an adjustment required to convert net income to net cash provided by operating activities, non-cash charges, depreciation expense, and amortization expense are always added back. Gains and losses, losses are always added back. Gains are always subtracted. And here are the changes in current assets and current liabilities. So here's an example. Um, the question, Josh, is Photo Plus reported? net income of 73,000 for 2022. Josh included in the income statement were depreciation expense of 7,000 and gain on disposal of $2,500. Josh's comparative balance sheet show the following, okay? So comparative balance sheet, 12, 31, 21, 12, 31, 22. You can see I calculated the change rate. I'm sorry, it's a little off, but accounts receivable increase, it's a current asset that increases by four thousand dollars and then you have an accounts payable which is a current liability goes from six thousand to twenty two hundred dollars decreases by thirty eight hundred dollars so what they've asked you to do here is calculate net cash provided by operating activities for josh remember net income was seventy three thousand depreciation was seven thousand gain on disposal twenty five hundred and you've got these two balance sheet accounts. Start with net income, $73,000. Our adjustments 
always add back depreciation expense, always subtract the gain. Here's the increase in accounts receivable, I'm going to subtract it. And there's the decrease in accounts payable, subtract it. So going further, there was an increase in land. This is going back to the original problem. This is not the Josh thing anymore. Company purchased land of $110,000 by issuing long-term bonds. This is a disclosure item only. It does not affect cash, because look at the journal entry. Debit, land, credit, bonds payable. Did it affect cash? Didn't affect cash. You have to report it. Has no impact on cash, has no impact on the statement of cash flows. See where they put it at the very bottom. They put it at the very bottom of the statement of cash flows. Here's another transaction. From the additional information, the company acquired an office building for $120,000 cash. Purchase of a building is an investment activity. And you can see where the building went up by $120,000. The journal entry to record this was a debit to building for $120,000, a credit to cash for $120,000. It's an outflow of cash. You can see in the, in the top of the screen here, cash flows from investing activities, purchase of building, negative $120,000, outflow of cash. What else happened here? The equipment increased, the equipment increase resulted from two transactions, a purchase of equipment of 25,000 and a sale of $4,000 of the equipment costing eight. So the original cost of the equipment when it was sold needs to be removed. But they also told you there was a $25,000 purchase of equipment. So this is what happened. And you remember this from financial accounting on the disposal of an asset. You need to prepare a journal entry on the disposal of asset. And what you do is, it's a four line journal entry, right? Record the receipt of cash, record the decrease in accumulated depreciation, that is the accumulated depreciation associated with that asset. Remove the asset that was sold, and then lastly, in order to make sure your debits equal your credits, you need to record a gain or a loss. So we know in this transaction, they received $4,000 of cash. That's proceeds from the sale of equipment. Cash went up by $4,000. That's the cash flow that we're concerned about. This asset, as you remember from the additional information, had an original cost of $8,000, an accumulated depreciation of $1,000, had a book value of $7,000. They received $4,000. There's the loss of $3,000. But you need to remove the accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation has a normal credit balance. In order to decrease it, you debit it. Got to get rid of the original equipment. Equipment's an asset account, has a debit balance. In order to reduce it, you got to credit it. In order to make my debits equal my credits, you see you need a debit loss on sale of credit. So you can see this is the full section, the statement of cash flows. And you can see up above, under depreciation expense, loss on disposal of plant assets. They added the $3,000. We've talked about that before. We look at the cash flows from investing activities. We have the outflow from the purchase of the new building. We have the outflow of cash for the purchase of the equipment. And then sale of equipment, plus the cash proceeds from the sale of the equipment positive number. There's another transaction that occurred. There's an increase in common stock. Common stock went up by $20,000. What happened? Issuance of common stock. I've got the journal entry down there below, right? Cash was received in exchange for common stock. 
debit cash for $20,000. That's proceeds, issuance of common stock, credit common stock. This goes in the financing activity section of the statement of cash flows, issuance of common stock, positive number. Retained earnings increased by $116,000 during the year. How did that happen? Well, remember the statement of retained earnings. Beginning retained earnings plus net income less dividends equals ending retained earnings. In this example, the beginning retained earnings plus the beginning retained earnings was $48,000. They added net income of $145,000. They had retained earnings available for distribution to shareholders of $164,000. In order to have an ending balance, they had to pay dividends of $29,000. There's your journal entry, debit, dividends, credit, cash, cash outflow of $29,000. And you can see the statement of cash flows the third section, cash flows from financing activities. Once again, there's the cash inflow from the issuance of common stock, positive $20,000. And then there's a credit. There's a outflow of cash, if you will, for payment of cash dividends, negative $29,000. So we need to make this thing tie out, right? Compare the net change in cash in the statement of cash flows with the change in cash account reported on the balance sheet. So here is the very short portion of the balance sheet for this company, Computer Services. Beginning cash, 12 31 2021, 33,000. Ending cash, $55,000. And an increase in cash of $22,000. This needs to agree to the very bottom of the statement of cash flows. So if we go back, you can see the very bottom, right? Net increase in cash. Where does that come from? It's the summation of the three sections of the statement of cash flows. Cash flow provided by operating activities of 172,000, less cash used in investing activities, 141,000 less cash used in financing activities of 9,000, net increase in cash, 172 minus 141 minus nine, $22,000, net increase in cash, 22,000. Beginning cash, 33,000, ending cash, 55,000. It's exactly what you see here. Those, you know, you got the math right if it agrees. You may have put something in the wrong section, but at least you got all the pieces. And it agrees. That's a statement of cash flows. Format and how to prepare it. Well, let's look at learning objective number three. Use the statement of cash flows to evaluate a company. Here's the life cycle of a company. And you can see at the very beginning, they do a lot of financing. As the company matures, they begin to generate more cash flow from operating activities and investing activities. So here's a formula that you're gonna be held responsible for is the formula for free cash flow. Describes the cash remaining from operations after adjustment for capital expenditures and dividends. Free cash flow equals net cash provided by operating activities minus capital expenditures minus cash dividends. Here's an example from Apple. Uh, net cash provided by operating activities, and you've got some information here relative to um, additions to property, plant, equipment, purchase of investments, et cetera, et cetera. Calculate Apple's free cash flow, right? Net cash provided by operating activities. Let's go back and look at that. It comes from the top line, right? 
less expenditures on property, plant, and equipment. Additions to property, plant, and equipment. Not investments, but property, plant, and equipment. 12,451. And then subtract dividends paid. Again, from statement of cash flows, you paid 12,769. Free cash flow, 38,378. So there is the um, chapter 12 statement cash flows that you're responsible for. Um, I suggest maybe you watch that once or twice to get a sense of how to prepare the statement of cash flows. We will then work on some, uh, some problems. Uh, the problems will be assigned. Solutions will be recorded, uh, uh, uploaded to Sakai. And the solutions, I'll go through them on another YouTube video. So there you go. Thank you very much.